All right, kids, we're going to do a solution stoichiometry problem. A little bit of a challenge, challenging question because it incorporates both stoichiometry and concentration calculations, but I think you can do it. Um, it says how many milliliters of 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide will react with 30.00 milliliters of 0 0.400 molar copper 2 sulfate solution. Since it is stoichiometry, we know that the first thing we're going to need is a balanced chemical equation. So uh, we have sodium hydroxide and reacting with copper 2 sulfate. We don't care about phases, that's okay. But uh, when we look at this, what type of reaction is it? So all of this stuff is coming together. You need to recognize that this is a double replacement reaction. So the cations or the anions, however you want to look at it, are going to switch places. So sodium will now be partnered with sulfate. So we know that sodium has a plus one charge, sulfate has a negative two charge. So we're gonna need two sodiums here. And there is another product. And the other product is the combination of copper two and hydroxide. So this is plus two, this is minus one. So we're gonna need two hydroxides. Don't forget your parentheses. And then we need to balance this. So sodiums here, one sodium, two sodiums. Put two there. That makes two hydroxides, but we have two hydroxides. One copper, one copper, one sulfate, one sulfate. Good. All right. Then what I like to do is label the information that was given to us. So how many milliliters of 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide? So that's this stuff. Um, we have... 0 0.125 molar, but we don't know how many milliliters. Question mark milliliters. And then it says react with 30.00 milliliters of 0 0.400 molar copper sulfate, copper 2 sulfate. So I have 30 milliliters of this, and it's 0 0.400 molar. So there's my info. And what I want to do, since this is stoichiometry, is we need to find out information about this. But what we're given is a bunch of information about this. And so what we can do is using stoichiometry, we know that we can convert from this to this, but we need moles in order to do that, right? That's the whole magic of a balanced chemical equation is that you can do a mole ratio. So what you want to do is use these numbers to get your moles of this, and then we can move over to this by using the mole ratio. So our first task is to calculate the moles of copper sulfate, and we will do that here by multiplying the concentration by the volume. Right, because within this capital M, capital M is moles per liter, molarity is moles per liter. If we multiply that by a volume of liters, then the liters will cancel and we will be left with moles, right? If we multiply those. So we can do 0 0.400 molar, which is moles per liter, and we can multiply that by liters to get the moles. We don't have liters, we have milliliters, but that's okay. It's a quick conversion. If we just move the decimal place three spots to the left, right? We get 0 0.03000. 0, 0. Yes, I'm writing all the zeros because they are significant. And now that's liters. Okay, so if you do capital M, moles per liter, moles divided by liter times liter is going to give us moles. So we'll do that. And we get this number, 0 0.012. But let's think about sig figs, three sig figs, four sig figs. We should have three here, so we need to add a zero. That is our moles of copper 2 sulfate. That was task one. Now that we have the moles of copper 2 sulfate, we can use stoichiometry to convert from this to this, and then use this information to get the milliliters of solution. So now we will start with this number. And 
and we want a mole ratio here. So I want moles of copper sulfate to cancel. What I'm interested in is sodium hydroxide. And where do I get these numbers? Well, from the balanced chemical equation. So moles of sodium hydroxide, that would be two. Moles of copper to sulfate, that would be one. Now I have moles of sodium hydroxide, which is cool, but really I want milliliters of solution. So I need to keep, keep going with these conversions here. Um, I can get from moles to liters by using the concentration, because I know that capital M, again, capital M is moles over liter. So what I have here is 0.125 moles on top and liters on the bottom. So remember that this number here, 0 0.125 moles is equal to one liter. That's what this means. 0.125 molar means 0.125 moles is equal to one liter. So I can use that and manipulate that however I need it here. And the way I need it here is I need the moles to be in the bottom. And then that puts the one liter on top. Um, and it's really of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so this came from the concentration, but we flipped it, put the liters on top. Um, and now we just need to do one tiny little conversion because the question's asking milliliters and we have liters right now. So this is just gonna be the relationship between uh, liters and milliliters. And so I know that in every liter, there are a thousand milliliters. All right, so now I have my setup and now I can type this into the calculator. Times two divided by 0.125 times a thousand equals 192 milliliters. But let's think about our sig figs. We started with this number, which had three sig figs, we used this number, which also had three sig figs. So we can have three sig figs. So actually 192 is gonna be our answer here. All right, so kind of a lot of uh, your knowledge coming into this problem, chemical equations, balancing, concentration, um, manipulating molarity, doing that calculation for concentration to get moles, stoichiometry, um, to get your final answer. So a pretty lengthy problem. Hopefully that makes sense.